Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. If you're like me, you've always loved the music of Richard and Karen Carpenter. My mom loved their music, my husband's parents loved their music, and I think we heard so much of it growing up that it's kind of like comfort food when we hear it now. I think it's comforting to a lot of people. There's something about his rich, beautiful arrangements and her rich, beautiful voice that just makes you unable to turn away when you hear it. This song sucks. Long ago, Talk about lame. <laughs> totally. A wonderful new friend of mine named Rob Urban wrote to me and said, Amy, I'm working on a transcription of a Richard Carpenter piano solo, and I'd like your help. I was intrigued. I knew that Richard Carpenter was a great jazz piano player. I, I know that Karen Carpenter is a great jazz drummer. If you don't believe me, check it out. The transcription is over the tune This Masquerade, written by Leon Russell. About halfway through, Richard Carpenter rips into this solo, and it's a good one. So I was, I was pretty excited when, when I heard it because I said, oh my gosh, we can learn a ton of stuff from this solo. I'm going to play it for you using the iReal Pro play along. As you can see, it's in the key of F minor, and that's the original key, which makes it nice. I've set the tempo to 95 beats per minute. There are a lot of 16th notes in this solo and 95 beats per minute is a good tempo to let you play all of those 16th notes. You can also see that I've adjusted the mix. I've turned the bass and drums quite a bit up and it is a picked bass and a Fender Rhodes keyboard also kind of turned pretty far up. I like the way that this mix sounds with this backing track, but you can, if you've got the iReal Pro app, you can set it up however you would like. All right, it starts with a vamp, and I'll let you take a look at the solo that has been transcribed by Rob and myself as I play it. It starts on the pickup, here we go. secret for you though. In my trained professional opinion, I don't think Richard Carpenter improvised it. I think he composed it. I think he played it. I think he probably improvised quite a bit of it, but then he wrote it down to make sure that he got it just right. I'll show you why as we get into it. There are just a couple of places that are like too cleanly played for them to have been improvised, I think. Also a couple of unique fingerings that he does that I just don't think people would improvise. Let's break it down now because Richard Carpenter uses so many good devices that you are going to be able to use as you improvise on countless other tunes. All right, here we go. This is the fingering I use. Like that, one, two, three, five. And then here, it's a one, two, one, four. You wanna make sure and do this. This is clean fingering. You could, and, and maybe nobody would ever hear the difference, but, but it sounds much cleaner than, it's a different kind of attack. So we land hard with our thumb on this D and then go one, two, three, one. All right, that's a little tricky and it might, it might take a little bit of practice. One, two, three, one, four, three, two, three, one. Easy enough, right? Putting the four, reaching over with a four allows our hand to line right up to play in the key of F minor. 
I'd like to point out that if you're ever, you know, playing a minor tune, at the end of the tune or at the beginning of the tune, you can choose to vamp between this minor chord and the four dominant chord. So you've got your minor chord that's the root. Right, it's like a 2-5 in E flat major that never goes to E flat major. So anytime that you want to add this to your minor tune, you can do it. And it's a great line to play. And then, and then he plays the melody. It's a cool little device with some, with some triplets. So just the melody, but he's, you know, syncopating it. Here's a cool spot. You know, I, I think this... One cool thing about this solo is that it's good for sight reading rhythms. Even before you play the notes, I think it would be really wise to sing these rhythms. Go back to bar four. Ba 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 da 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 ba da. Then you can try to sing the pitch contour as you go through it without even hitting the notes, just kind of the contour. Ba 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 da 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 ba da. Just kind of like that. You can fake it. Then you want to kind of move your hand along while you do it without even playing the notes. I think this really internalizes the rhythms and the contour before you worry about fingering and exact notes. And you point and sing, and then you've got a feel for it, and then you can go for it. One, two, Now it's important to wait till after two, uh, you know, think about that. And that takes, it takes some discipline. See the fingering there, it's all very easy. It's, he's, he's just using, um, he's just playing, you know, in the key of F minor. A chromatic device here to walk from the fifth to the sixth. So, so when you get to that, you, you put your one underneath, one, two, one. So that gives you room to, and you can reach over with your second finger. So one, two, three, four. This is cool too. It's, um, he's using, he, he starts on the fifth of the F minor chord here. And he, and he keeps playing in, in the key of F minor like we've, like we've been doing. But here, he uses the whole tone scale over the D flat 9 chord, which is really cool. And then he keeps it up, just like his name was Thelonious Monk. But here he lands on the 11 of the G minor chord. So I, I kind of think he's, he's like, all right, I did something melodic. And now he does something, you know, jazz-ish. Now I think he's like, for a second, I'm just gonna... Because he knows who his audience is, right? His audience are my parents. So he's gonna, he's gonna, every once in a while, do something that makes them feel comfortable. Because I tell you what, the whole tone scale on 16th notes does not make my mother feel comfortable. It makes her go, whoa, he's a great pianist. And he is, but he comes back to it for, for my mom right here. Uh oh. Yeah, and, and this here's more bebop device, classical device, really, too. Um, uh, first, he uses the notes of an altered dominant scale. Right, so he's on C7, altered dominant scale, flat 9, sharp 9. Now we're back in the key of F minor. Land hard on the third. So this is nice too. This is a nice device in F minor as well. He hasn't really done it yet, but it's using the F minor harmonic scale. All right, so altered tones up here. The order in which he plays these notes, I mean, most people would go. 
that's kind of a common jazz thing to do. So to think, to go, I think that he wrote that. I just don't think somebody's going to improvise that. But, it, but it's cool too, and it's unexpected. So you want to get your thumb under there. I like how he lands hard on the nine of the F minor chord. It's a really nice rhythmic line there. Which is cool too. Make sure to get your thumb here. And then, and then to change it out. So here you have one, two, three. You put a five here to set your hand up to be able to play right there. I also think that that's not something somebody would improvise. It's just kind of interesting. And this is another rhythm that's kind of tricky, so let's sing it before we play it. One E and a, two E and a, that's a rest, whisper. Two E and a, three E, rest, a, rest, E and a. So, ba ba da ba, uh, 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 ba ba, ba ba, ba ba, ba. Da ba da ba, ba 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 ba. Ba ba ba, ba 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 ba. Now we sing the contour. Ba ba ba, ba 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 ba. Now we play it. And then we go on. You know, look back up at bar one. It's the same notes that he chose to use over the B flat nine chord there too. Also in bar five. Right? It's like a habit of his. Right? To use the on the dominant chord, which is nice. To use the one, two, sharp two, three. So he does it again here in bar 13. And that's how I would that's how I would handle that. Unless you use two hands, but I would go one, five, switch it out, like that. This is the hardest fingering of the whole solo right here. And he uses a really great bebop device. Um, Charlie Parker probably taught it to us. It's a great device over a dominant chord. He starts on the fifth, he plays the sixth or the 13, and then he lands hard on the dominant seven, goes up the extension to the nine, the sharp 11, and the 13, hits them all. So I go one, two, three, four, one. That's the trickiest part, just to get your hand ready to do to do that. And then you're set. And then a three, we land on the on the third of the C7 chord. And we're and we're again using this F harmonic minor, or the notes in the C C altered dominant scale. That's a beautiful kind of classical line. This last part is the part that also makes me think that it wasn't improvised. It's a, it's a tricky little part. So we're here on these last two bars. Three, one, four, three, and then this is down an octave. So I change, I change out my, my one that was here for a four this time to make it down like this. I just don't think he would have thought to play that in, in the moment. It's kind of interesting. It's, it's kind of tricky fingering and it sounds great. It's kind of like rock. Kind of like reminiscent of Ozzy Osbourne or something heavy, Richard. If you'd like a copy of this worksheet, click on the link above my head. And it's the joint work of Rob Urban and myself. So one more shout out to Rob. Thanks for introducing me to this solo and giving me the motivation to make the video. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe, check out my website, and I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.